Let us start first, though, with recruiting, right? 2023 cycle. That's what we're into right now as the 2022 kiddos are on campus, if not already. I mean, we're talking about the early enrollees already having a semester in, talking about the true freshmen joining up in the summer. It's going to be a lot of fun. But we've already settled on who the best player is in the 2023 class. And you'll probably know it is one Arch Manning. Now, yes, Arch Manning is the nephew of Super Bowl winning quarterbacks, both Eli and Peyton. His father is Cupper, and his granddaddy, for whom he gets his name, is Archie Manning. This is the first family of football. Now, as if that wasn't enough, he's also a generational talent. And this I kind of want to lay out for you. This is why we are going to talk about Arch this week, the next week, and the following week. But we're going to focus a little bit on Georgia this week as he is expected to take his official this weekend over there. So why Arch Manning? Because he's a generational talent. And we have been hashtag blessed with generationally talented quarterbacks over the last five years. I want to say this is a wild run. Because all you got to do is take it back to 2018 when we were having a really good and raucous dialogue about who was the best quarterback in that class, Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields. Now, Trevor Lawrence went and became the first true freshman to lead his team to a national championship since 1985. Hey, all hail Jamel Holloway at Oklahoma. Thank you very much, Coach Switzer. But also, 15-0 in 2018. And yes, ends up going to the Jacksonville Jaguars, where I expect him to have a great NFL career. But to round that point out, Find an Ohio State fan that's upset with Justin Fields and how he performed for them in Columbus, a proud fan base and one that expects quite a bit from its football players. 2019, we had Spencer Rattler. We've had Bo Nix. 2020, we had Jackson Dart, National Gatorade Player of the Year, coming out of Draper, Utah, Corner Canyon, stand up. The second of three outstanding quarterbacks. First is Zach Wilson. Of course, Devin Brown has since signed and enrolled at Ohio State. Went to USC. He's now perhaps the most impactful transfer in the SEC. Gonna play a little quarterback for Ole Miss. And then 2021, Caleb Williams comes onto the scene. Does some great things at Oklahoma. They expect Hollywood to go Hollywood at USC. And now we are in 2022, where we're talking about Quinn Ewers, perhaps leading the most talented Texas team since 2009 and being one of the most talented quarterbacks of all time, according to the rankings era. Now, 2023, we're back again with Arch Manning. Coming out of Isidore Newman, not putting up gargantuan numbers, but you can see the arm talent, you can see the intellect, and you know what kind of pedigree he comes from, if not rearing, he has had. But one of the things that I'm fascinated with about Arch is just how quiet his recruiting has been. Usually for a player of this caliber, let alone a quarterback, you hear a bunch, you see a bunch. There's lots to say, but his family have been very good about protecting him from the likes of the big bad media. They, and they choose to speak. We choose to listen. The last time they chose to speak, May 21st, they told 247's Steve Wiltfong that they will be taking the first of three official visits in June, June 4th being Georgia, June 11th being Alabama, and then Texas gets the sweep on June 18th. However, what has been kind of interesting is Nick Saban took a 2023 quarterback since they announced that they were going to take another visit to Alabama. I should also say they have visited all these places, but you only get five official visits. And these are the ones that absolutely matter, absolutely count. And that you're taking them during the summer and say not during the season. You can read into that as well. Now with Georgia on deck, I want to take a really good look at how Georgia fits for Arch Manning and what Arch Manning probably needs to know about Georgia, right? Start with this. Georgia's been a quarterback graveyard. It is where QB careers have gone to die. As a matter of fact, when I take a look at this, there hasn't been a 3,000 yard passer at Georgia since Aaron Murray accomplished that feat 2014, 2013, which is ridiculous when you think about this, but also that's the way that Kirby Smart has built his program, where the quarterback does not feature. The quarterback is an asset to the entire football team. While you might say, hey, RJ, didn't Georgia just set the record for the most NFL draft picks in any single year? Yeah, they did. Now, 
Which one of those guys was a quarterback? None of them. You are also talking about a place that has washed through Jake Fromm, Jacob Eason, Justin Fields, Brock Vandergriff, and Carson Beck, Gunnar Stockton are all out there on the vine. JT Daniels came through there, got a few starts, and left. Jamie Newman didn't even start and left. And now that Stetson Bennett has decided to make his return, you have to really look at that quarterback depth chart and wonder when you're going to get your shot. Now, I would also be remiss if I didn't say, look, if you want to be a 4,000-yard passer, Georgia is not the place for you to go. Hey, RJ, didn't Georgia win the national championship? Yes, they did with defense. And the quarterback, not really good. Matter of fact, he put the ball on the carpet. Fourth quarter, down one, or up one, ends up letting Alabama get the ball back, go up 18-13. Yes, they won the game, but if you have a better quarterback back there, maybe you go win it. And that's kind of what I'm looking at, right, is does Kirby Smart want a better quarterback back there? No, he wants Stetson Bennett back there. And he's made that clear. When you pick Jake Fromm over Justin Fields, you don't really care about having the best athlete and quarterback on the field. You just don't. So you get Justin Fields transferring to Ohio State, where he does lead his team to the national title game. They co- or, or they come up just a little bit short. But I also found it was really interesting that we're talking about Arch Manning at a time when Georgia could pivot, right? And it doesn't seem like they're going to. I wonder, do you want to go there and sit the bench for one, two, three years so you could play one year before you eventually go in the first round of the NFL draft. I also wonder if you are as good as Arch Manning is, say Trevor Lawrence level, Justin Fields level, wouldn't you want to start right away? I would. I wouldn't want to wait. I want to go throw the ball around. I want to throw it around all over the yard. And not that I am uninterested in competition. It's a business decision. And I kind of hate that we put it in this way because we try to make the kids into cowards and they're not. They're actually quite courageous and heroic and awesome. And they look at the landscape and say, wait a second, why do I want to take the path of most resistance when there's one of least resistance where I can achieve the same aim? For instance, if Arch ended up at Florida, who's not on the list right now, as far as we understand of schools he is entertaining, or his uncle's Tennessee, or his daddy, uncle, and grandfather's Ole Miss. You still expect him to be able to lead that team to a college football playoff appearance and or even a national title game because he's that good. And if you are that good, you shouldn't have to sit there and wait for a while to find out if the head coach is going to give you a shot. I sincerely believe that how Kirby Smart chose to treat Justin Fields told us everything that we ever need to know about what he feels about quarterbacks, one. And two, why a quarterback probably should not be entertaining Georgia if they have an opportunity to go somewhere that is just as good, i.e. Alabama, or even at this point to me, Texas. Yeah, go do that. Go have a good time. And more to this, right, why go into the SEC East? Why go to the, well, I guess if you went to Alabama, you would have to play Tennessee anyway. Yeah, either way, this is just bum for Tennessee. That sucks. Yeah, I just, you might have wanted to be in these sweepstakes. You probably understand if you're not. Nico's a great quarterback, but still kind of stings, but it doesn't sting as much as it stings for Ole Miss, I'm certain. So when he goes on his visits, if we learn something that is worth discussing on the number one ranked show, we will discuss it. We will discuss what it means and whether or not he should entertain Alabama next week. So please, uh, you're getting all the Arch Manning content that you could possibly want right here on the number one ranked show. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.